The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 18th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, of course, if you're inside our Tiger Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the downside. The only sector, or well, two sectors inside the S&P 500 are trading the upside. That's the energy sector and the consumer staples level, the XLE and the XLP. Dow's down 169, about a half a percent. Nearly eight tenths for the S&P, or 35 points. Nine tenths for the NASDAQ, 131. One and a half percent for the Russell, 27 points there. One and six tenths for the semis, a 57 point move. Three percent for the trannies, 450 points there. We've got gold up 22 bucks, silver's uh, down 10 cents, light speed crude is up a buck 64, natural gas up three pennies, the 30 year treasury is down one point and four ticks, printed out at 108.28. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got Falcons Beyond Global up 259%, 31 dollar move maybe today is their ipo northrop grumman is up six bucks one and a quarter percent inspire medical up three and a half percent nearly six bucks lockheed martin five bucks one percent mcdonald's is up four dollars that's a 1.7 percent move to the downside booking holdings off 73 dollars two and a half percent biorad laboratories 27 bucks nearly eight percent asthma holdings 25 bucks four percent united rentals 21 five percent hubspot 18 dollars about four percent to the downside so we got movers and we've got shakers let's begin first let's just understand market breath right now let's take a look at the four primary time frames weekly daily 240 and the 60 minute time frame this is for the s&p 500 we're just slightly bearish on the 60 we're bullish on the 240 we're bullish on the daily we are bearish on the weekly you know what that says to stevie choppy market at least for the s&p 500 and the x100 bearish on the 60 bullish on the 240 bullish on the daily bullish on the weekly again we've got choppy market conditions when we take a look at the task market breath but here's the important thing to know it's not that bearish the Taz market breath out there. So uh, what does that mean? Well, the 60 minute uh, Taz market breath for both the ES mini and the NQ was bearish at a bearish crossover. That meant more instruments were trading below profile than above profile. So one of our questions that is in already is to take a look at the 60 minute TD9 counts for the ES Mini. I think this individual is on to something. Who was that? That was uh, CKP inside the Tiger Zen. So let's go take a each of the 60-minute equity future contracts out there. What we'll see on three of the four cases, now we've got those charts up on our screen. For example, CKP knew this. This was just a trick. And CKP knew that a TD9 count bar had completed as we came on the air at 11 o'clock. That means this pattern will complete by 11.30. That says we should have a bottom between now and 11.30 with price bouncing up to 43.69, perhaps 43.76. We take a look at the NQ doing the same thing, a TD9 count bottom. Did I say 
by 12 noon. Not maybe I said 11:30. If I did, 60 minute time frame chart we're looking at it's by 12 noon. I think I said between now and 11:30. Between now and noon, both for the ESENQ and the Russell 2000, each of them in the bar following bar number nine. What that should lead to doesn't mean that it will. What it should lead to is a rally up towards those oscillator and change lines. Now, sometimes there's profile levels that get in the way. In the case of the ES. We mentioned those profile little levels. In the case of the NQ, its profile level is at 15.132, and the oscillator change changed on at 15.147. That's where price should go target. Now, the Dow is the holdout here. The Dow does not have a, a TD9 count pattern. It's only in bar number seven here, so it's not participating. We'd like to have a unanimous vote out here, but you don't always get what you want. In the Russell 2000, also forming a TD9 count bottom that will complete as we come as we come off the air at 12 noon. That should result in a relief rally that takes us up towards 1760, maybe even 1766. So CKP, you knew the answer to that, didn't you? I'm going to guess the answer there is yes. So courtesy of CKP, you've got those TD9 count bottoms for the 60-minute time frame chart. That ought to help the intraday traders out there. Let's go on to... Um, Let's just take a look at the general markets out here. Let's go take a look at, let me close these charts out. When I say the general markets, I, I really mean the equity futures, but just for longer time frames. So if you give me a moment, we'll pull those charts up and we'll come back to these here. But first, we're going to take a look at daily and weekly time frames for the equity future contracts out here. And those daily and equity are important for us to take a look at. For example, on the ES Mini, you've got a confirmed by the D point pattern. On the weekly time frame, you have a confirmed by the D point pattern. 42.35.50 is the price that uh, is the level that price must close below in order to negate both of those patterns out there. What we can see inside the ES Mini is really over the course of the last six, seven days, it's been trading sideways. The sideways move finds support at the oscillator and change line. That is currently at 43.47. That'll change by a few bucks or so as price moves up and down. The resistance level is up at 44.30. That's the top of that profile. If we take a look at the daily time frame for the NQ, the daily time frame for the NQ shows that price right now is testing a key level of support. That is its oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at, we're printing at about 15,113, 114, the oscillator and change line 15,104. What happens if price closes the day below red oscillator and change line? It increases the odds, especially since this is a bear structured profile, that we would see the NQ make its way back to 14,676. But price needs to close below 14,792 at week's end. If it does that, then we have a we could have a trigger. Now we would have an A to B equals CD to the downside. Don't have that in the queue right now. Watch the support level for the NQ. Remember, the NQ as a daily time frame is hitting a support level, an oscillator and change line. You're going to have a completed TD9 count bottom for that hourly chart. That would suggest and add to the idea of a rally. In the case of the Dow equity future contract. It's just consolidating. It found resistance up at the top of that profile, 34,167. Almost seems like it's an unfair advantage for you and I to be able to have those numbers ahead of time so we know exactly where buyers and sellers are hanging out. We don't know how strong those buyers and sellers are. We do know that in the case of the Dow right now, they're real strong. They were able to defend that line. On a uh, daily time frame for the Russell 2000, Rosemont to indicator bottom, price uh, consolidating with inside his profile, a weekly close below 172070 would be bad news for the Russell 2000. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. we be right back. We'll take a look at the GDX, Tesla, the TLT, and AU. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, all of the U.S. indices trading on the downside. We're taking a look at the charts here for the GDX. I apologize. I did not write down the name of the individual that emailed me this question. But the question was, can we take a look at the GDX? I'm paraphrasing here. And why is the GDX trading lower with gold trading higher? Well, the answer to that question is really going to come from the charts, not Stevie out there. If we take a look at these GDX charts, we can see that today will become bar number nine of a TD nine count pattern. A TD nine count pattern, unless uh, the GDX just simply falls off planet Earth out there, will complete that pattern tomorrow. Now, the top could be in today out here. So we've got at least a short term top. The GDX is back towards uh, prior swing points out here where it has found resistance. Now, volume is pretty good. The GDX has done 11.3 million shares. That swing point, last time price was up in this area, had volume of 21 million shares, and the time before that was 14 million shares. You've done 11. That's like a 30 million share day out here, give or take. So you're pushing that swing point with volume. That would suggest to me especially if price closes above 29.44, that you'll be, up, you'll be up at that 30.13 level, the top of that swing, once again, to at least test it. Weekly charts got a nice uh, buy the D point, Gartley buy pattern out there. Price is above the center of its bullish structured profile. But the GDX may be signaling to an eye that it's getting ready to take a little bit of a rest. Now, that rest could take price all the way back towards that 28.01 level. But let's not stop there with regard to the GDX. Let's instead move over to a different set of charts. And those are going to be the holdings with inside the GDX. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change screens because what's going to show up on my screen now are the ones at the lower end of the totem pole, so to speak, from a weighting perspective. So let's go take a look at the ones that are at the upper end of the totem pole. So give me a moment here. I don't know why. There we go. Screens. Go to this screen. So this is approximately the top eight. I have not updated this chart here for uh, a little while, so it may have changed just slightly. But if we take a look at Newmont Mining, which is the number one holding out here, what's this got? 
TD9 count top. It's going to confirm today, complete tomorrow. How about Rangold, G-O-L-D, TD9 count top, going to confirm today, complete tomorrow. Franco Nevada is going to confirm a TD9 count top right at his breakdown TD9 uh, resistance level at 143.02. How about AEM, TD9 count top right at its breakdown resistance level 49.90. How about uh, WPM, TD9 count top? How about Goldfields, TD9 count top? That's going to complete today. In the case of Royal Gold, TD9 count top confirms today, completes tomorrow. AU does not have that uh, topping pattern out here, so it's the one of the top eight. Uh, instruments that doesn't have that topping signal. We can uh, go take a look at another. I don't. Maybe this is. Well, let's just go take a look at this set here. Let me change panels. Well, you're going to kind of get a feel for the strength. Now, what? Remember, TD nine count tops don't always work. TD nine count bottoms don't always work out there. So. The cool thing about them is once we have that pattern set, and that pattern is set after the uh, bar after nine after the the bar following bar number nine completes out there. If price closes above that high, whatever that high is, those patterns that are negated tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. Here we take a look at Harmony Gold HMY TD nine count top confirms today. Um, BVN. It doesn't look like that. What's this? To this high is eight sixty four yesterday eight. 64. Nope, hasn't done that. Um, just looking around here. EGO, TD9 count top. Uh, sand, likely to form a TD9 count top tomorrow. TD9 cop and IAG, right as it's getting back towards the bottom of its uh, daily profile at 241. What else? Do, I don't need to do the rest of them, do I? Because I've got about 8, uh, 12 more to do out here. You kind of get the feel. that. Why, so the question, why is the GDX doing what it's doing when you've got, um, let me just change this out here, when you've got a rally inside of gold. I think it's really very simple. It's because of those TD9 count patterns that you and I spend a good deal of time on out here, and that's really the only reason that I can come up with. But what I do want to say is just, it's just time to be cautious out there. Um, time to be cautious because I don't think that the uh, Middle Eastern um, activities are done with out there. And clearly we can see over the course of the last couple of days that that has been driving metals higher, the dollar higher. That is the uh, the flight to safety out here. It most certainly is not the 30-year treasury out there. In fact, that was one of the questions that came in from G-Man. And G-Man wanted to take a look at the TLT. So let's go put the TLT charts up there. And then we're going to really take a deeper dive into the 30-year treasury. Oops, that wasn't it. Let's try. Huh. Oh, let's try this one here. There we go. So here are the charts. No, I don't. They're not up. Let me get them up. Let me get the right screen up. Sorry about that. It'll be up momentarily. And now you've got the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly charts for the TLT. So the daily time frame here for the TLT shows us what? Shows us that we're trading right now below its swing point from Jan October the 6th. That low was at 84.06. You're trading right now, you're at about 83.95. Let me just get this on my other chart because I know that I have a little bit of a delay going on here. And we are trading at 84.07. So you want to watch that swing point low. But I say, really, that's not what you want to watch in trading the TLT. You want to watch what's going on on the 30-day. That's going to be the better representative. And so that's what Stevie's going to do. We're going to switch over and take a look at those uh, multi time frame charts for the 30-year treasury. When you take a look at that monthly chart right now, you can see that it's Pushing lower, doing it with less relative strength out there, but that simply requires a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a bottom. The monthly chart is saying we're trading below last month's low. It's saying get out of Dodge out here. It wants lower price. Now, the weekly chart is in an A to B equals CD to the downside. It has not made it all the way to its initial price projection. It too has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Um, let me see here. If it uh, ticks below, 108.29, which is done, 108.25. So you do have bar number eight that is likely going to form this week in the 30-year treasury. That says a bottom could form between this week and the next two out there. Well, if you take a look at the uh, daily time frame, if there's a close below 108.29, 108.29, and right now what we're printing at is 10901. If there's a close below 108.29, it negates its by the D point pattern and suggests that we head lower, much lower. I see some negated TD9 count patterns right now on the uh, five hour time frame chart, on the two, on the four hour time frame chart, 
on the uh, two-hour time frame chart. It's not looking good, but let's not stop there because there's more for us to take a look at. I just have to figure out where I put that chart. And that's the longer term view because the question is, if these levels get taken out, if that daily buy the D point pattern gets taken out, where is price headed to? So for that, we're gonna switch back to my other set of charts, the black background set of charts out there. And we'll take a look at the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. And we'll do it for its monthly time frame. So let's pull open the monthly chart out here. What you will see on the monthly chart, I have a couple of different things. I've got the retracement levels. So for those of you that like the retracement levels, if we come off the low from 22,000, that low out there was at the uh, 2223 mark. So here we take that low, January of 2000, and we go all the way up to the high that has formed here in March of 2020. So 20 years out there. Now we can see the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. We can see that price right now is at the 1.618 expansion of that C to D leg. A close on a weekly, monthly basis below 109.64 suggests a move to 96.28. Price is also below the 0.382 retracement of that move. You know what that means. Once you get below that, it wants to go target the 0.618 retracement. So over time, 30-year Treasury likely headed to 84 and change. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, all the U.S. indices still in the uh, red out there. Dow's off 175, S&P 33, NASDAQ 100, 109. Russell's down 25. We're taking a look at Tesla out here. I believe they are out with earnings after the bell. This is for John C. in the Tiger's Den. John, Tesla has pulled back into an area where if this is only a counter trend move to the downside, where it should find uh, support. It hasn't gotten down there all the way. That's at 246.39. 246.39 is the center of its bearish structured daily profile. If price can hold support there, then it was only a counter trend move to the downside, and it could be setting up an A to B equal C D to the upside. I say could be because price would have to take out that TD9 count top up there uh, in order for that to happen. And first would have to get back above um, the uh the uh, top of its profile, then above its green oscillator and change line. So it would have some work to do to the upside. So they're all with earnings today. Uh, if it uh, we don't get a close below 246.39 at day's end, not really sure. You could go either way on this one because that's the point where a counter trend rally would fail. If the market forms uh, uh, performs badly, even if the numbers are good, maybe it heads lower. Where's the additional support? The additional support would be at 238.65. At 238.52, you have the bottom of its profile. At 238.65, you have its TD9 count breakout level. So if it responds poorly after um, after hours uh, with regard to the news, 238-ish is the area where it should find support. What if it doesn't find support there, Stepo? Then it would be 232. That's the bottom of the weekly profile. What if it doesn't su find support there, Stepo? 229.52. That's the top of the monthly profile. And what if it doesn't find support there? Well, then we're now into the 144, 165-ish area. Um, and 164.53 happens to be the weekly TD Nank out breakout level. We don't have that signal just yet. Um, but, uh, John, that's the best that I have for you. You've got a TD9 count daily top. You've got a TD9 count weekly top out there. But, again, no real key level of support has failed just yet. It will do that if we get a close below 246.39. So I wish I could provide you with more information than that. That's all that I've got, folks. So, John, I hope that that helped you out. And uh, thank you so much for the request, as always. Nitram. Wants to take a look at uh, Anglo Ashanti. AU is the ticker symbol out there. So let's get that up on our screen. I believe we took a quick peek at that when we we're looking at all of the instruments inside of the GDX. This was one that did not have a TD nine count top. And there's no other pattern that I've got out here other than right now prices consolidating with inside its profile. So Nitram, the levels to be watching. This is a bullish structured profile that says that on a pullback, Anglo Ashanti should find support between. Between 1790 and 1835 out there. If it closes below uh, 1790, you've got oscillator and change line support right now about 1777. You get below that, you could take this thing back to 1669 or so. That is not the call. The call right now is we don't have a top. We have price running in resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level up at the 1938 area. Uh, that Anglo Shante, I can't tell you whether or not this trades directionally with regard to the GDX out there. It probably does. Uh, but watch the support area, 1790 to 1834, 1835. So Nitram, I hope that that provided with the information that you're looking for. You also wanted to take a look at DUG. Boy, it's been a long time since I've looked at that instrument. Doug is what? I know it's in the oil and gas. Is that the inverse of the XLE? It's the ultra short energy. What uh, folks in the den, somebody in the den, what's the ETF? What's the bullish ETF that this is emulating? It's just been so long since I've looked at that. I, I think it's the XLE out here. But when you're going to take a look at the Doug charts, and, and the reason why I'd want to understand that is because the underlying instrument out there may be different than taking a look at this uh, double or triple ETF out there. DUG is what we're looking at. If we take a look at DUG, it shows that today will become bar number eight. Uh, at an area where price found a bottom. That was Roads Mentum Indicator bottom. That was on September 28th and September 29th. If price were to close below that low, that low being 985, and right now we take a look at Doug, it's 993, it negates that pattern, but what could take over is a TD9 count bottom. So no help from the Tiger's Den. Doug ETF. What is the Doug ETF? It is daily performance of the S&P Energy Select sector index okay i don't have that index is that the it's a two two x hmm 
<laughs> I'm thinking this is the XLE, but I hate making that mistake out there. I don't know the answer to that. But just for the heck of it, you're welcome on Tesla out there. Uh, let's try. Let me just put up the charts here for the XLE. The XLE showing us a uh, TD9 count top. I, I, I don't know. And again, I could be looking at the wrong ETF. And if I am, my apologies for that. But you should go back. And I'm not going to do that during the show. And just make sure you understand what Doug is trading up because it's a 2X. So in the XLE, you do have bar number eight that's going to uh, form today. That says we could see a TD9 count top inside of the energy sector, the XLE, that it forms between today and Friday out there. So we'll certainly want to watch that. Right now on a weekly basis, the XLE is trading into its weekly swing point back from the trading week of September 15th. There was 110 million shares that uh, were traded then. We are about halfway, not really halfway through the trading week. And uh, this has done 49, 40, about 48 million shares. So 48 million shares versus 110. We're about halfway. So price is moving into that swing point with pretty good volume out there. Um, well, maybe I've got some help here from SNP. Uh, he wants to take a look at ZM. No position. Okay, so we'll take a look at Zoom a little bit later. But back to the XLE out here. You do have a TD9 count top on a daily basis that could form between today and Friday. Just keep a close eye on that out here. Of course, we also want to see what's going on with regard to Lightspeed Crude. Um, so let me just put up those charts out here. So let's take a look at the Lightspeed Crude. Did we, we just rolled to December, did we not? I believe we did. Uh, if we didn't, Stevie just rolled it there. But I think that we did just roll to December inside of Lightspeed Crude. So let's just pull up those charts, see what kind of signal. So the energy sector, the XLE, showed bar number eight. Does Lightspeed Crude? And Lightspeed Crude does not. Lightspeed Crude shows bar number seven out there. And it's trading above the uh, green oscillator and change line. That's a bullish signal. And uh, price is above the center of its bullish structured profile. So this tells me that Lightspeed Crude wants to make a move up towards 91.25. Um, I'd be cautious on the TD9 counts right now inside the XLE or DUG, assuming that the uh, DUG follows the XLE. I think I've uh, kind of beat that horse to uh, death out there, so we won't continue to do that. Uh, and um, so I hope that that helped you out, Nitram, with regard to Doug. Coda wants to take a look at ITA. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here. And ITA is what? ITA is... It's the iShares Trust U.S. Aerospace and Defense um, uh, ETF. And it's got resistance, which it tested a few days ago, it tested again yesterday, it's testing again today. And those two areas are really the TD9 count breakdown level at 110.49 coda and the top of its daily profile. So the sellers are looking. 110.53, by the way, is the top of that daily profile. You'd love to see price take that out. If it does... And I'd have to use one of my A to B equals CD patterns that use the same candle. I certainly hate that. We're not going to do that as we speak right now because that's not the pattern that's in place. So right now, the Aerospace and Defense ETF out here is dealing with resistance. That's between 110.49 and 110.53. If you get above those levels, I would say 111.09 is its next target and above that 112.75. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the stock charts here for Zoom. ZM is a ticker symbol, the video communications company. And really, when you take a look at the weekly and the monthly charts out there, S&P, what do you see? What we see is just a sideways move out here. Is this accumulation? I don't know if it's accumulation or not out here. I mean, this is an instrument that traded up at 76. You're down at 60 three right now 62 bucks out here i don't know but we see a long sideways move out there what we also see is that the top of the weekly profile has been taken out since um the beginning of the year that's how far it takes us back so right now 72.95 is a key resistance area out there um, i don't see any bottom signal yet on the daily time frame there is an a to b equals cd down pattern there's two of them out there a bullish reversal candle would confirm a short-term bottom we take a look at the monthly chart out there. Oh, shoot, this traded up at 600 bucks and formed that TD9 count top. And now you're down at 63 bucks. Zoom looks to be pretty much like a toast out here. Now, there is a wave number seven. Did that get taken out? That was 60.45 is low. We got down, uh, no, uh, 60.45. So if Zoom closed below 60.45, there's not even a monthly uh, bottoming pattern that is out here. So just a sideways move, a pretty narrow range out there. Uh, nothing that looks of too much interest out there um, to Stevie in his eyes looking at the chart, S&P. Um, well, that's just my thoughts when I take a look at that. So I do hope that that uh, helps you out. And sometimes it's better just to look at the bigger picture and that monthly and that weekly time frame. Uh, they provide that uh, they provide that picture. Looks like a dead soldier to Stevie. Let's go take a look at XBI. This is for McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. And XBI is the uh, biotech ETF for the NASDAQ. Is that the NASDAQ? I think it is the NASDAQ, if I'm not mistaken. If we take a look at XBI out here, um, we take a look at XBI, that is got a what? Just looking here. It's got a wave seven bottom signal out here, and that took place, that was confirmed on October 16th. Now, you can see here, this was a bullish structured profile. Price was below... Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was below this area when the pro. No, 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 no. Do I take that back? All right. So let's take on the daily basis. If uh, McGuppy, if XBI closes below its red oscillator and change line, that's currently printed at sixty nine thirty eight. If price closes below that, 
that's going to signal a move back towards this uh, 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 swing point from October 13th. Now, that swing point has volume of 12 million shares. You're coming down today with 2.7. So you're pulling to that swing point with lighter volume. If XBI closes above 69.75, you're likely to have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. That swing point happens to be a bottom. That is a wave number seven bottom out there. Your resistance is 71.93, and your super resistance is up at 73.06. That's the center of its bullish structure daily profile. On a weekly time frame, XBI has a confirmed TD9 count bottom that took place two weeks ago. What would need to take place to negate that pattern would be a close below that low, which is 69.09. That's also a hammer candle. So if you close below the bottom of a hammer candle, that says if you're long, you're wrong out there. If you're long and you're wrong, where would price be headed to? Well, then at that stage, what I would do is I'd look at the swing point for May of 2022, and that's down at 61.78. So one step at a time inside of XBI. Watch the uh, swing point from October 13th. Watch that high. That's up at 69.75. Watch the oscillator and change line. Does price close below 69.37 today? If it does, we're likely going to go test that low of that swing point out there. And I hope that helps you out, McGuppy, with regard to XBI. Dan inside the Tiger Stand, he's playing a little rocket ship. That rocket ship is VFC. And VFC, man, they had one heck of a day yesterday, running from 1624-ish down there up to the 18 and change range out there. Now, the cool thing about this stock chart, really the weekly stock chart here, Dan, and you're going to want to know what this, where this closes on Friday. Why? Because this was trading below its bullish structured weekly profile for more than two consecutive sessions. We're trading above that center line, which is 1813. We're at 1845. If price can close above 1813 on a weekly basis, odds favor, Dan, that this is more than a counter trend move and that price should make its way to 2016. The daily time frame has got no topping patterns whatsoever. Um, and so this should continue to move higher. There is a buy the D point pattern that formed out there a couple days ago, uh, right here when it formed that Three River Morningstar candle formation. The weekly, or the monthly, I should say, needs a... Now, did I tell you that the weekly also formed a Rosemontum indicator bottom? Of course, the week's not over, but right now you do have a bull sash candle. Of course, on a monthly basis, you could also potentially form a Rosemontum indicator bottom. Just needs a bullish reversal candle. At the moment, it is a bullish hammer candle, but it doesn't matter what it is on the 18th. It matters what it is at the end of the month. So VFC looks good. The most important thing about VFC this week is does it close above 1813? And if it does that, this is likely off to those races with 2016 being its next destination point. S&P had one more request, and that was to take a look at SYM. So let's put SYM up on our screen out here, try to get a feel for what that is and what it's doing. Uh, SYM is... Um, Symbotic Inc. Symbotic Inc. trading right now at about $43.13. That is a, a TD9 count in the making. It will complete a TD9 count pattern today so long as price closes above 40.68. And that seems like a pretty likely outcome. So you're going to get a TD9 count. That pattern will confirm today, should confirm today, and complete tomorrow. That should take price back to its oscillator and change line. That is currently printing out at 38.85. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, what this shows me is that price is trading into resistance. That is the top of the weekly profile, 43.87. So we've tested that so far. We've rejected that level. If price can close above 43.87, that would be bullish from a weekly perspective. But we still have that daily TD9 count topping pattern to contend with. That could just result in a pullback to support, again, being that oscillator and change line on the daily time frame. No signal here on the monthly that's going to assist us. So back to the uh, daily and the weekly for Symbotic Inc. out there. You're up at resistance on the weekly. TD9 count on the daily as you're doing that looks to me like this is getting ready to pull back. The confirmation of it getting ready to pull back, I'd have to say, would be a close below the top of its profile, which so far is tested and rejected, and that level is 42.85. So watch 42.85 first there, S&P, and uh, thank you so much for the request. I hope that helps you out with regard to S um, SYM. Let me see if I've got any other requests that have come in. Do, 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 do. No, I don't see. Some numbers too. Okay. 
IXC, Steve, is the S&P energy sector. Thanks, John. So let's pull that up there. IXE. Let's pull up this ETF. Let's use the exact ETF that matches that S&P energy select sector out there and uh, see, which, uh, see, which, see what this is doing. So why is it taking so long? It just is. IXE. IXE. So I'm not getting anything on that. Is that did I, you put IXE, right? Is that an I or is that something else? So, and that's not the index, right? Maybe it was the index. Oh, well, I'll try to get that uh, figured out here. And uh, if not, I'll take a look and see if there's any other requests that have come in. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we got a, uh, qu a request that came in. This is from uh, Vic, I believe, wants to take a look at ticker symbol DXCM. 
So we got DXCM. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen out here. I am. So we've got uh, DXCM on our screen. This was a recent buy, and I believe it's a buy based upon the TD9 count bottom that formed out here a few days ago. So we've got wave number seven and a TD9 count on the uh, daily time frame. We've also got a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. So you got three bottoms out there that have formed by October 16th. Does three bottoms make it better than uh, one? It doesn't. What you're dealing with right now is resistance out here, and that resistance is the top of its daily profile, 8543. Now, as price is approaching resistance up there, I'm just going to look at the 30 minute time frame. Do I have a topping pattern? If this generated a bearish reversal candle, I would, but price right now is trading above the top of its profile. This new profile on a 30 minute basis just formed below price. That's a bullish signal. Uh, as we speak right now. So I don't have a short-term top, of course. I only looked at the 30-minute time frame chart, but you're up at resistance. What else can we take a look at? We can take a look at consecutive steps up and down. Here, today is going to be bar number four of consecutive moves higher. Now, we can see a couple examples where this made it to bar number seven consecutive days and five days consecutive. But you are starting to near a time period where Dexcom, DXCM, uh, could form a short-term top. I'd certainly say, if not today, uh, between tomorrow and Monday is when you'd be looking at a short-term top. With price up at that resistance level, I'm more apt to think it's more likely the end of the day today, and price just uh, churning and consolidating with inside that uh, profile level out there. So hope that helps you out. Best of luck to you on that trade. I like the entry, and now the question is, what's going to happen? at the, where those sellers are residing. That's up at 85.43. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. Have a great day.